Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we're going to quickly talk about flashing the 500 series BIOSes onto 400 series uh, GPUs from AMD. So, uh, first things first, you can't flash a 580 BIOS onto a 470. It will not work. You can flash a 570 BIOS onto a 480, but you will end up with a card that doesn't, like, you'll lose shaders in the process. So, you'll go from, you know, a 480 spec is, I think, 2,300-something cores. If you flash a 570 BIOS or a 470 BIOS onto it, either of them will do it, um, you'll end up with 2,000 cores. Your card is now slower, so don't do that. Flash a 580 BIOS onto 480s, flash 570 BIOSes onto 470s. If you flash a 580 BIOS onto a 470, there's a very good chance it will not work, because the 580 BIOS will essentially try to unlock a whole bunch of extra cores that the 470 doesn't have. I mean, they're physically there, but they're all disabled, so it'll try to run them and they don't exist, like, it it'll cause issues. So don't put 580 BIOSes on 470s, um, and don't put 570 BIOSes on 480s, only put 80s on 80s, 70s on 70s. Really, it's not rocket science. Um, so that's sort of the first thing you need to keep in mind. Now, as for BIOS compatibility, compatibility, which BIOSes will work on your core card? Uh, that's really hard to say. Um, I've heard reports that like cards with IR controllers work on NCP controller, like uh, on semiconductor controllers, and it's just it's a bit of a mess. Uh, if you have a dual BIOS card, you basically don't have to care about compatibility. If you flash a BIOS that doesn't work. You can just sw flick the switch, boot into Windows, flick the switch again, right over the bad BIOS. Solved. Uh, if you do have a dual BIOS card, do not flash both of your BIOSes. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Okay? Never ever touch one of the two BIOSes on your card. That's a really good rule to follow, uh, just, just in general, if you're ever messing with BIOSes. It's, it's like, I never mess with one of the BIOSes on every single one of my cards. And I really wish some of the cards just came with, like, right protection on the second BIOS. It's like, it w really wouldn't be, I, I don't feel like that would be a massive loss if you couldn't, phys like, if it was impossible to actually flash the second BIOS manual um, with with software. I really wouldn't, wouldn't think that's a problem, but, you know, whatever. Um, you can write over whichever BIOS you want, so only write over one. So, yeah. Um, so, if you have dual BIOS, you don't have to worry about compatibility issues. If you're doing... If you do not have dual BIOS um, and you flash a bad BIOS, you're going to need a backup GPU. Uh, if you don't have a backup GPU, uh, well get a backup GPU because basically the problem with flashing a bad BIOS is is that you'll have to go and boot up on a different GPU and then tell ATI Flash to overwrite the BIOS on the GPU you screwed up. It's not really like it's really not that hard to recover from uh, and a different GPU is anything from an iGPU or a like anything literally anything as long as it can put out display you're fine. Um, sometimes Windows will be weird about picking up bio, uh, cards with you know, bad BIOSes on them, uh, in which case you might have to resort to DOS. Uh, and sometimes, in very rare cases, you might end up in a situation where you can't actually write onto the BIOS chip um, because you trip write protection. And uh, there's not really any way to get around that as far as I'm aware, at least not from a software sense. You have to do a physical mod to the GPU to fix that. So if you don't have dual BIOS, I would generally recommend you you be pretty damn careful with uh, with flashing your BIOSes. Um, and if you're really like you know if you're really really nervous, just wait for somebody else to try your card. There's got to be somebody out there who either cares less about their card or has well no has less sense. Uh, what is it? Eh, at this point it doesn't matter. But just wait for somebody else to try it who doesn't care as much as you do about your card um about their card not your card they don't really care about your card either way um yeah that's uh that's sort of that as far as the whole should i flash should i not flash for compatibility reasons goes um now then actually speaking of bios compatibility how will you know which bios will work best on your card i have no idea Honestly, um, which is really, really like 
I hate to say it, but I just sort of have no idea because the issue is, um, even on like the 480s, there are some cards which for some ungodly reason don't work with a BIOS that works on a lot of other very similar cards. Um, and there's basically your main concerns are memory, con like memory chip compatibility and PCB compatibility, uh, PCB compatibility. And ideally you want to flash identical PCBs. So the new 480, the RX 580 GTS and GTR-S from XFX seem to both be using a identical PCB to the old RX 480 GTR. So if you have a 480 GTR, you can flash a 580 GTR or 580 GTS BIOS onto it. No issues, as far as I'm aware. Um, as far as core clocks go, you want to go for the slowest clocked BIOS you can find. Um, always go for the slowest clocked BIOS. The reason for this is, um, in my testing, I tested three 480s so far. Um, and at this point, I think that's the end of all my 480 testing, unfortunately. Um, and the worst of the 480s I tested needed 1.2 volts to do 1370 megahertz. Uh, it just so happens that 580s ship at 13, like the official spec from AMD for what a 580 is, is 1366 megahertz. So four megahertz be below my worst card at 1.2 volts. So if you have a really, really bad 480, you need a basically bone stock 580 BIOS. Otherwise, there's a pretty good chance you won't even be able to get into Windows. Now, so basically hunt down the slowest BIOS you can find and flash that onto your card. Don't try to flash any faster BIOSes. If you're flashing, especially don't try to flash like the 1450 megahertz boost clock BIOSes like the Nitro Plus Limited Edition has a 1450 megahertz BIOS. The GTR-S has a 1450 megahertz BIOS. Those cards are very, very, they're limited editions because I assume they are binned um, because they're really like, they're, they're up there as far as like, if you just take a look at like 480 numbers, 1450 megahertz is really high. Okay, um, that's that's like a really nice 480 there. That's, that's like, I'm not sure about the exact percentage. I'm willing to say it's like t top 20, maybe top 10% of, of 480s. So if you don't have a top 10% 480 and you flash one of those BIOSes, there's a very good chance you won't even make it into Windows, which would force you to recover the BIOS the hard way um, if you don't have a BIOS switch. So try to flash the slowest BIOS you can find from a 580. What kind of benefits will a 580 or a 570 BIOS give your card? Well, um, you're going to get a higher TDP. 580s, I mean 480s and 470s, I'm going to keep mixing this up, shipped with 110 watt BIOSes, okay? 110 watt TDP was the stock uh, power limit for the GPU core. The rest of the card isn't actually taken into account on the TDP because AMD doesn't have any... There's no current sensors anywhere else on the card. The only thing the card can actually monitor is the vCore VRM because, you know, it's cheaper to not bother with extra current sense. So you had a 110 watt TDP for the GPU core and 480s would very quickly hit that. Um, actually, there's a lot of 480s that would actually run above that a little bit if you, at, at stock, like say my 480 Strix, that ran at 120 watts uh, stock and it throttled a hard, like all the time. It just kept throttling because of that. So, if you have a uh, a 480, um, and then 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 if you went overclocking, you could max out the power slider to plus 50 percent. But when you did plus 50 percent, you'd still end up with a 165 watt power limit, which sucks. Which is why in all of my RX 480 overclocking videos and everything, I was always blowing out the power limit between 200 watts and 300 watts. And I think one of my cards ended up with like a 500 watt BIOS or something. So your, one of your big benefits with a 580 or a 570 BIOS is going to be that you're going to end up with a 180 watt stock TDP limit, um, which is really, really nice because once you put plus 50% on top of that, you end up with 270 watts maximum power limit, I think. Not entirely sure. And actually, I'm not entirely sure if they ship at 180. I think they ship at 180. Um, but you'll basically get the benefit of the higher TDP. You'll also get a higher initial voltage, um, which also, yeah, basically it'll clock better on 1.2 volts than it clocks on whatever was stock before. Um, 
So you basically get a higher power limit, which means overclocking is going to go better because you're going to, the card's going to throttle less, so you're going to get better performance and all that. Uh, you'll be able to run higher clocks because of higher voltage and higher power limit. So those are the big benefits if you focus on like top end performance. Other benefits that the 580 and 4, 570 BIOS have over the 480 and 4, 470 BIOS is AMD has gone ahead and really optimized some of the lower power states. So between like idle is now more power efficient, uh, video watching is more power efficient, multi-monitor is more power efficient than it was on the 480 and 470. So if you want to save some power in multi-monitor watching videos or idle, you're going to want a 570 or a 580 BIOS for your 580 or your 470. Um, that's another benefit you'll get. Um, so those are sort of the reasons why you'd want to flash those BIOSes. You basically get some power savings at idle. Um, the main risks are flashing, well, so that, that's all the benefits. Um, now let's talk about the risks. I already talked about how if you flash a 1450 megahertz BIOS, there's a very good chance you won't even be able to get into Windows because when the AMD driver initializes, it hits full 3D clocks. And when that happens, it crashes if your card's not stable at 1450 megahertz. Uh, so don't flash those BIOSes. Don't flash the 1450s. I wouldn't even flash the 1411 BIOSes. I'd aim for, like, try to hunt down. I know XFX has a card, which is, like, 1386. Try that BIOS. Or, like, go for the really low power BIOSes. Go for those. Always try to get those. Now, other issues you're going to run into. Um, a lot of the 480s come with rather terrible PCBs. Um... Which basically means if you flash a 180 watt TDP BIOS onto them and then put it to maximum power slider and you end up with 270 watts TDP power limit, uh, you might end up burning out the VRM on some 480s. And those would be things like the uh, XFX RS. I think that card might be at risk depending on how hot the VRM gets. If it goes above 100 degrees, you're in trouble. If that VRM goes above 100 degrees, it's really not... I, I'm pretty certain it should die, unless my calculations are wildly wrong. Um, if you have a power color red devil, don't run fur mark, still applies. <laughs> like, you know, that doesn't change. Um, th yeah, there, there's a lot of cards out there where the... The, the 580 BIOSes are kind of, 580 and 570 BIOSes are going to be at risk of damaging the PCB. Um, and this includes everything from, you know, sudden violent death of the VRM to the VRM slowly wearing out and then eventually dying. So um, if you have a really cheap 480 or a really cheap 470, I would recommend against flashing the new 570 and 580 BIOSes just because the PCB might not take it. If you have a reference card, I would recommend not flashing the uh, the 580 and the 570 BIOSes because the stock cooler of a 480 and a 470 is completely crap and completely incapable of cooling 180 watts of GPU. Okay, it's... Do I actually have the heatsink? Okay, well, I don't. But the stock heatsink for a 480 is a block of aluminum joke. Okay, and it sucks. So if you flash a 580 BIOS onto that card, you're going to be temperature throttling all the time. It's not even like a case of you might be. No, you will be because you now have a power limit that is 20 watts higher than the maximum power limit that heatsink is barely capable of cooling. The heatsink sucks. It hits 85 degrees pretty much all the time. And if you give it an even higher power limit, it's going to hit 90s. And that's really not good for the lifespan of your GPU. It's also going to sound like a jet engine. So if you have a reference RX 480, do not flash a 580 BIOS onto it. Same goes if you have a reference blower, blower reference design style RX 470. Don't put a 570 BIOS on it because it's going to make the card run either stupid hot or stupid loud. And that's going to suck. Uh, both for the longevity of the freaking card as well as your user experience unless you're deaf. So... Uh, yeah, um, if you have a reference card or like, you know, all of those. I mean, if you have the reference cards, then you'll be happy to know that at least the PCB doesn't suck that much. And you can't, if you swap the cooler, you could run the 
570 or 580 BIOS, but uh, if you're on the stock cooler, don't. Uh, if you have the really cheap 480s and cheap 470s that are of questionable design quality, don't put 570 or 580 BIOSes. Because actually, like, say, uh, the 580, like, a lot of the new 580s and 570s have significantly upgraded the VRM designs on those cards because of the new power limits. So, you know, don't. Uh, and, and that's really all there is to say, I think, on the topic. That took 15 minutes. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below with any questions you have. And please don't ask me how to flash a card <laughs> or which card is compatible. Um, I've had one too many people ask that of me already. I am not going to answer any more compatibility questions for, for GPU BIOSes because honestly, I can't tell you. I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of guessing off of like how similar the PCBs are. And I've already heard of at least one card where I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. So yeah, that's that. Uh, and uh, right, I have a Patreon. There's AHOC shirts. Uh, you can find both of those things down in the description below. There's also a PayPal donation if you want to support me that way. Uh, or if you, you know, aren't willing to spend money, you can spend time by watching advertisements on YouTube. <laughs> and yeah, so that's that for this video. And see you next time.